At 10.17 this morning, students across Florida stood silent. The tribute honoring the 17 people who died one year ago at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. One year ago, when Alyssa was brutally shot down and taken from our hearts, and it is very painful. A year ago today, there was chaos and confusion during the Valentine's Day shooting rampage. But now a peaceful memorial garden stands outside the school. A sign with the school's unofficial slogan, MSD Strong, hangs above. Today is a day that uh, we are calling a day of uh, service and love uh, to honor uh, the victims. In almost an instant, student survivors became activists and made it their mission to campaign for gun reform. This is our generation's Vietnam War, except the war is in, in our country. They crossed the country holding protests. Fight for your lives before it's someone else's job. And rallies. We were the only people that could have made this movement possible. Since the shooting, 26 states and Washington, D.C. passed varying gun control measures. We're really seeing a lot of reasons to look to the future and see hope. But after the year of activism, today is a day for silence. In Parkland, Florida, I'm Natasha Chen reporting. This morning in Parkland, Florida, a moment of silence. Marking the somber one year anniversary of the day 17 innocent lives were taken when a former student marched into Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School armed and intent on devastation. A commission found some of the law enforcement officers who were there failed to confront the shooter. Following the commission's scathing report, the school district worked over the summer to better secure the campus. Uh, we replaced the intercom system and upgraded that here at the school. We added over 100 cameras here at Stoneman Douglas. Survivors of the shooting have taken the country by storm. They are refusing to be silent and intent on ending gun violence. Fight for your lives before it's someone else's job. Students marched on Washington and toured the country with gun violence prevention rallies. They encouraged young people to register to vote and aggressively pressured candidates to campaign on stricter gun laws. I plan to make sure that nobody else, no matter the zip code, has to live in constant fear of gun violence. Since the shooting, 26 state legislatures and Washington, D.C. have passed gun control measures. But on the federal level, it's unlikely for the Republican-controlled Senate to pass similar bills. HR8 passed, which was a, which is the bipartisan background check bill, and that's the first gun violence prevention bill that's been passed from House Judiciary in decades. Governor DeSantis was surrounded by Brevard County law officers and one crusading father in announcing new school safety measures. Andy Pollock lost his 18-year-old daughter in the mass shooting at Stoneman Douglas High School. I can't rest until I get. Uh, accountability for my daughter and there's still some more things that need to be done. The governor says he wants to do them. A flurry of executive orders are going out. Those orders will provide an additional 50 million dollars for armed school guardians. They'll require schools to share the best school hardening and security ideas and will seek to identify people who could become mass shooting threats. I think we could probably you know save uh, or obviate some of these instances and save lives and that's what this is all about. The extra money for school guardians is money that went unspent when schools did not meet the deadline to apply for the money. The governor is extending the deadline and he's ordering schools to contribute to a list of best practices for safety measures that make schools hard to attack. These people who may want to do harm are going to realize that that's not a good place to try to do that. The governor says there's a way for law enforcement to do a better job of identifying and stopping mass shooters before they strike. When you go back and look at the missed opportunities for intervention with this kid, it's frightening. That kid, Nicholas Cruz, is suspected of murdering 17 people, including Andy Pollock's daughter. One year later, he and all of Florida continue to deal with the consequences. In Titusville, Dan Billow, WESH 2 News.
It's called a Temple of Time, 35 feet of sculpted birch plywood across from City Hall in Coral Springs. I really like the idea of it. I think it's, I think it's um, a beautiful way that you can send off, you know, how this community is. On Thursday, the temple opens to the public, and for three months they can fill it with their pain. Then the temple's creator will burn it down, hopefully taking some of the pain with it. What I hope is this this that someone who's having a hard time sleeping will be able to rest well, okay? That's all, that's what I would hope. It's one of several events planned for the community as the anniversary of the Parkland tragedy nears. Today's the beginning of a very tough week. I don't know, looking at the temple, I just see the layers of the woodwork and it's kind of like the layers of our, our pain and our emotion. In Fort Lauderdale Monday morning, organizers from Do Something Florida dropping off their first batch of signatures. The beginning of a petition they hope helps put an amendment on the 2020 ballot, which would ban assault rifles in the state of Florida. Weapons like the one the killer used to murder 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School last year. These weapons are used across the world by American forces in war. And it's time to end the war in our schools. It's time to end the war in our streets. Meanwhile, back in Coral Springs, the temple to help continue the healing process is nearing completion. I kind of understand what they're saying now when they say, come here, leave your pain here.